For today's quiz, we're going to derive the quadratic expression. Now, before you hit stop and say, no, 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 nobody understands how to derive the quadratic equation. It was handed down by aliens. Let's just calm down. We're all going to be fine. And your students are going to be able to do this on their own. And it's going to be really empowering. We're going to start off with an expression that they all know, and then we'll work down towards the quadratic. So we're going to start off with a x squared plus b x plus c equals zero. Everyone's familiar with that. And then we're going to go down to our quadratic. We're eventually going to end up saying that our x is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 ac all over 2a. Now, most of your students are not going to be able to do this without hints. It's okay. Get them started and see what they can do. Typical student responses will be, A, I want to go to the counselor and I want to drop your class. B, they're going to make a case that they can't do math and they come from a long line of family members that also can't do math. So math is an impossibility for them. And the third one will be, um, okay, if you really want me to do this, you better not try and grade me on this. This is unfair. Let them know that you're going to help them along. So here's what the quiz looks like and you're gonna end up showing them that you're giving them hints. Now, as a teacher, you're gonna decide how many hints to give. If you have a really advanced group of students that have been through algebra, geometry, pre-calc, whatever it happens to be, they might not need these hints. If you have other students that are gonna struggle, give them more hints, whatever you think is appropriate. This is what the quiz looks like, and the hints are right here. Here's our expression we're starting with, and this is the quadratic. I'm going to hold up so you can see the hints. Again, I would give the fewest number of hints, and most likely if you give a hint and give them a little time, they can make a little bit of progress. In the end, if they can derive this with the least amount of help from you, they're going to feel emboldened, and they're going to start to uh, recognize that they have skills that they didn't think they had. All right, your students are going to need some help to get started. They can't even see light at the end of the tunnel. They're not going to know what direction to start. So let's give them the first hint. The first hint is to multiply both sides by 4a. So we'll multiply. By 4a. So if I put a 4a on this one, I'm going to get an a squared term, and then I'd have 4a, bx, and so on. So let's do it. So we end up with 4a squared, x squared, plus 4a, b, x, plus 4a, c, equals 0. Now, they might say, look, you've made it worse. Now it looks more complicated. But point out that... Look, we now have a 4ac, and hopefully they can start to make the connection that there's a 4ac down here. Stop there, let them go, and if they need another hint, we'll give them one. Your students might also benefit from a little bit of uh, remediation on FOIL. If they can remember FOIL, uh, great. If not, help them through and say, let's remember what FOIL was. FOIL, first, outside, inside, last. And if I had an expression of x plus y, and I had another x plus y, we can end up uh, putting those together, and we can say, take the first, and we would end up with an x squared, and then the outside would be plus x, y, and then the inside would be plus y, x, and then we'd end up having plus y squared. And remember, I can write x, y, or y, x. It doesn't matter. So in other words, we're going to end up with x squared. There's two of these pieces here. So I have 2x, y, plus y squared. You might be asking, why 
would I show them this or get their memory going about foil if I have an expression like this? Because our next hint is going to end up saying, what if we can make this into some type of summing the squares or something like that? So uh, if I were to take my 4AC to the other side, so let's subtract that off. So let's subtract. Four AC. So I'm going to end up having four A squared X squared plus four A B X. And then I'm, I'm going to subtract that four AC over here. Now I'm going to put it over here and it's going to be negative minus four AC. And you'll notice that I left blanks here because you want to end up setting them up to complete their square. In other words, is there a number that I could put here? And as long as I put it on the other side also, could I start with an expression and end up completing the square? And I'm going to stop there. Let's see if they can see it. If they can't, it's not going to be a big deal. But remember, some of our information is down here. We're hoping that some of your students will see there's a B squared right here and they have the 4AC. Hopefully they're gonna then start to put it together that look, if I had a B squared on both sides here, that might work. So they might say, I'm gonna add B squared to both sides. So I'll put add a B squared to this side and whatever I do to one side, I can do to the other. I end up with this term ready to go and now they can start to think, okay, remember that foil stuff we were doing? Couldn't this really be written as x plus y squared? And many of them will think, you know what, we've done this before. I just got through a test with it, and I just never thought I'd use it again. So here we can end up taking this expression, and we can end up saying, well, you know what, I'm going to give the students a chance to do it, because if they can get this next step, more than likely they're going to get the rest. All right, students probably can see this part right here. They can complete the square. In other words, they're going to end up saying, what could I square that would give me this? Now, if you already noticed, I put that expression onto uh, your sheet. As a teacher, just take that off if you don't like that. But I think most of them are going to say, we're going to end up having, of course, uh, what, a 2, an A, and an X here, and we're going to end up having our B, and then we would end up having that squared. Let's see if that works. And they can work backwards and end up foiling to find out if that's true. Regardless, I would then have my B squared over here minus my 4AC. So now they need to figure out how to get this B squared over 4AC, and it's got to be a square root. Now, they see that this term is squared, and hopefully they're going to get it, so I'm going to pause again. If students have made it this far, they've made it. So try your best <laughs> to not interfere, and give them a few uh, minutes to see if they can grind through this, because they know they're going to have to square root both sides. So uh, take the square root. both sides so we would end up over here and now it's going to go pretty quick we're going to end up having our 2a x plus our b squared equals uh, oh no that would just be a b we don't have our squared term equals our b squared minus 4ac and that would then be under our square root symbol from there they're going to be able to see this. They're going to say, look, all I need to do is take my B over there. It becomes negative. I can then get my X alone. So let's say we end up having our 2AX. I'm going to shift this over now. So I could say, well, you know what? Maybe I'll leave this one right here. Uh, 2AX. And then we're going to end up saying equals. Take our B to the other side. Becomes negative. And then whenever we take a square root, remember, if I were to take a square root of 4, Let's just put a little remember statement. 
where square root of 4 gives us two answers. It gives us 2 or negative 2, right? Because um, square roots have two answers. So this is going to be plus or minus our square root of our b squared minus 4ac. From there, they can see all I need to do is solve for my x. My x is going to be equal to my minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over r2a. And that's how you can get the quadratic. Look, these are very, very important uh, exercises. Students that just end up memorizing formulas, they come and go, and, and it becomes this mystical process. Students that can say, oh, I can start here, and maybe I need some hints. But once I have those hints, I can grind through. Now we're starting to think as mathematicians. If you can derive your own equations, you are well on your way to becoming a mathematician. All right, that's our quiz for today.